Fifth graders, we are here with part two of William Henry Singleton's memoir. All right, let's get into it. I do not mean by all of this that our life was altogether bad. We had enough to eat and we had certain pleasures. It was a common thing for the slaves to have parties where the slaves from adjoining plantations came together and danced and sang and played. One of the worst features of slavery was that the slaves on a plantation were virtually in prison. They could not leave the plantations except with the consent of their masters. As an adult, I secured employment as a servant of Colonel Leggett. I told the colonel my story, but I found out later that my story was not believed and that they thought I had been sent by the rebels to secure information for them about Union troops. I was then hired at the AME Zion Church at Newburn, and commenced to recruit a regiment of colored men. I secured the thousand men, and they appointed me their colonial. It was one day at the general's headquarters, a man pointed to another man who was talking to the general in an inner room and said, Do you know that that man, do you know that man in there? I said, No. He said, that is our president, Mr. Lincoln. In a few minutes, the conference apparently ended, and Mr. Lincoln and General Burnside came out. The general pointed me out and said, this is the fellow who got up a colored regiment. President Lincoln shook hands with me and said, it is a good thing. What do you want? I said, I have a thousand men. We want to help fight to free our race. We want to know if you will take us into your service. He said, You've got pluck, but I can't take you now because you are a contraband of war and not American citizens yet. But hold on to your society, and there may be a chance for you. On January 1st, 1863, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which made me and all the rest of my race free. We could not be bought or sold anymore or made to work without pay. I was appointed sergeant of Company G being the first colored man to be accepted into the federal service and the only colored man that furnished the government with a thousand men in the Civil War. My life since the war has been the ordinary life of the average man of my race. Shortly after the war ended, I joined the AME Zion Church of New Haven, and it was in that church that I learned to read. I, I became ambitious to learn all I could, and so read as many books as I could and availed myself of the opportunities that presented themselves to educate myself. All right, we got another discussion question. Out of the events that we just read about, which event, in your opinion, mattered the most to Singleton? Why did you choose this event? How do you know? Remember, you can pause at any moment to answer these questions if you choose. I have been extremely fortunate in my employers. From all I have received, kind and considerate treatment, vastly different from the rough, sometimes brutal treatment I received from my slave masters. It is as different, in fact, as freedom from slavery. It is impossible, I think, for those who have always been free to realize the difference. Now I feel that I am part of the country, that I have an interest in its welfare and a responsibility to it. As a slave, I was only property something belonging to somebody else. I had nothing I could call my own. Now I am treated as a man. I am part of society. When election day comes, I go to the polls and vote. And my vote counts as much as the vote of the richest or best educated man in the land. Think of it. I, who was once bought and sold, and is not only I who, has, who have the, this privilege, but millions of other men of my race. Ah, we can truly say, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I feel I am greatly indebted to the government and the American people for what they have done for me and my race. I cannot find words to express properly what I feel. But, I, but my heart is overflowing with gratitude. When I think of my situation and the situation of the people of my race now, and think of all the blessings we enjoy compared to with our former situation, I feel that as long as I live an honest life, do my work and conduct, my, conduct myself properly, 
I have the respect and good wishes of the community. It is a great thing to have lived to see this day come. It is great to feel that the people of my race understand something of the debt they owe this great country and are showing their appreciation by trying to be good citizens. God has been very good to me. I can read his book. America has been good to me. I am one of its citizens. There is no stain on the flag now. All right, we're going to end this with the two discussion questions. The first one being, Singleton ends his memoir by saying phrases such as, I am greatly indebted to the government and the American people for what they have done for my race, and my heart is overflowing with gratitude. Does it surprise you that he says these things considering the life he has lived? Why or why not? And our final discussion question, in the last line of Singleton's memoir, he says, there is no stain on the flag now. What does Singleton mean when he says this, and how do you know? All right, fourth graders, it has been a pleasure reading you William Henry Singleton's memoir. I learned a lot, and I hope you did too. Can't wait to talk to you again. See you later.